Welcome to Everfree! <laughs> so, some of you are returning, some of you are first time, so we're just going to let people know how uh, we do things here. Um, we like to interact with the audience. So, if we're talking about something and you have a question, raise your hand, we'll try to get to you. It's fairly easy, straightforward. Um, if you have some questions that are a little bit more specific, like, well, in my story, I am doing this, you know, one particular thing and you want to talk with us afterwards, um, if we have the time, it's probably better just to uh, hold your question until afterwards if it's a little bit more specific like that. Um, we also have, uh, this year, uh, we have uh, been posting stuff on Film Fiction, so if after the con, you want to go back and talk with people, communicate, maybe you sat next to someone and you want to, you know, you can't remember their name, you can go there and you can actually find a post for this, uh, this panel. And you can actually find people and talk about this topic here. So if you want to continue the discussion after the con, you can still do that. Which we hope that people will take advantage of. And you can find that group on Film Fiction. It's just the group uh, Everfree uh, Readers and Writers. So we are going to get started. This is the panel Fan Fiction, uh, The Community and You. And it focuses on uh, reaching out to others. Because as a lot of us know, uh, a community is more than just the numbers of people that you follow and who follow you. Uh, the community is, for a lot of us, what actually keeps us in more than the numbers. It's the people and the friends that we've made and uh, the people we interact with regularly. And so uh, in that spirit, we've gotten a variety of uh, panelists here. Um, I'm Pike Pai. I'm the head of the writing track. And here we have Penn Stroke, who is Woo! the most yeah. uh, who has a made, made a name for himself by being the most followed author uh, on film fiction, and then we have Dusk Watch, who is an accomplished editor, and editor and pre-reader, or just editor? I, I do both, actually, editing and pre-reading, but uh, a lot of the times it's uh, just editing, so. Awesome. And then we also have Zephyr Dunn at the end, who's actually our, th who's actually the third in the, in the writing track chain of command, and he'll be running some panels later, so this is actually going to be his first panel, so let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> He has done a great job reaching out to the community because he does our fan fiction spotlights, which we do once a week on fan fiction. Uh, he helped, I mean, you know, he came to a con and started talking with people, and that's how I met him, and that's actually why he became the third, was because I read what he did for the Iron Authors competition, and he, uh, we had some good in-depth uh, in conversations, and it's obvious that he knew what he was talking about, and so I wanted to bring him on. And, that's what community is about. I mean, it's it's networking. I mean, when you go to college, they say college degree is important, but a lot of people who actually get jobs will say networking is as or more important than just going to college. And just as a side note, he's terrible as an author because he still hasn't given us any new th anything new to edit for a while. I'm working on ever free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping to shave him into getting more of a whole. It's coming. I promise. <laughs> Friends, right there, already. <laughs> um, and so what we want to do is we want to help people figure out how to, to reach out. You know, maybe you have a favorite author like Penstroke or one of the other ones of us. And uh, you want to, you know, just reach out and say hi, say thank you, stuff like that. And it's things like, it's okay to do that. It's just say, you know what, thank you for writing this. You know, if, if you were having a bad day and it cheered you up, let, let the authors know because that is more important than a thousand likes on any site is having one person write back to you and say, hey, I really like this. And you know what, if you have a comment, you're like, you know, I really like how you did this, but I'm wondering why you did that. Let them, you know, ask. It's, it's always okay to ask, right? Yeah. 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 That's how most of us get involved in it, I think, is just yeah. reaching out to people and going, hey, you know, I like what you did. I realize that a lot of people are bad mouthing it, but, and there, there clearly are some issues with it, but at the same time, it's yeah. got some merit. Well, even, so. even the really good stories, I mean, I would say, Early on, Passons was one of the, the best stories at the time when it was coming out, and it still holds up pretty good compared to, you know, you know we have people coming in, oh, I'm a, you know, an actual author, and I went to college and stuff like that, and this is technically incorrect. It's, it's writing. I mean, people have different styles and different things that they like, and if something, you know, if you follow an author and you're wondering why they went in a different direction, I mean, you can talk about that with them. Why does you look at me like that when you did that? <laughs> <laughs> it was that literally different direction. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. I've gone in a different direction. You went to Babs. That's a different direction. That's 
No, Babscon. No, that's, no, but for me, they, they, this and Babscon are both the same oh, direction they, because they, they are both no more. Yeah. We they actually have a uh, super goal. trampoline there in the back, so we're going to give him a hard time about uh, volunteering at Babscon as the uh, right track lead there every once in a while. But, no, I mean, it's, I mean, we're from different cons. We, we're up here because we like literature. So, what are some of the things that, uh, let's start at the end there, what are some of the things that you like to talk about, like, that, that matter to you about the community, exactly? like, how do you reach out and get reached out to? Well, I mean, I'll certainly start by saying that, uh, I mean, you mentioned the community is definitely what keeps me involved in this. I, honestly, if I never met a voice actor, I would be totally okay with that. The creativity in this community is what's amazing to me and what keeps me in this fandom. And... The fan fiction extension of that because as a writer that's where I find my home. So knowing and meeting all sorts of people that being able to talk about pony wars and this ridiculous crazy stuff we do on a serious level with people is just amazing. And fan fiction and the writing community is one of the great places about that. Like Pico was mentioning earlier, one of the most important things is that feedback. I mean, likes and favorites are great and all, and it's great to look at numbers and say, oh, most followed and most views and all this, but. If you let it all be about stats, that's no good. Say you like a story. The few words that says, I really enjoyed this story and it made my day, like you said, goes so much farther than just simply clicking numbers and increasing some stats. Anyone can up spreadsheets, play WoW if you want to do that. If you want to interact with people, <laughs> talk to them. And to me, that's the biggest part of community interaction. Just be involved. If you don't like something, say it. If you like it, say it. You meet people that way. Yeah, um, I think for me it's it's a lot of there's a lot of that just fan fiction stuff that we get because it keeps us going in the off season. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of creative activity, as, as uh, Zephyr said. So um, that that's all well and good, but at the same time, it it, it really is just reaching out to people. Um, I've had people on fan fiction that have posted things on their blogs that I have followed um, that have said, you know, I, I've gotten a ton of negative feedback on this or, or uh, I feel like I'm, I'm not progressing as a writer, those kinds of things. And it's amazing how much impact you can make just by reaching out to those people and not even just commenting on their stuff, but actually take the time to send them a private message. Um, it, it's a good way to, to build more community and, and it also will land you if you want to get into editing or pre-reading or anything like that. That's one of the best ways to do it. That's how I got to pre-read for, uh, for Zephyr over here on Holden Sons. I read it a while back and I sent him a message and I went, I noticed there were a couple of, you know, really nitpicky minor grammatical things. Um, I, I would love to pre-read for you. And I think that was when it only had, what, three chapters? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a ways back, yeah. Like, like yeah. chapter three and it's, well, what, 20 something, I think? But if you include the sequel. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, if we include the sequel. It's, it's, I think it's up to 20 chapters. And um, so I've been on that project now for a while and uh, I just, emailed him and said, hey, I really like the story. I'd like to pre-read for you. There's a couple of minor nitpicky things. Uh, and that's how we ended up becoming friends. So, and then, you know, here we are. <laughs> so. I can definitely echo what these guys are saying about, it's like, in just be, just past sins alone. It's like, I've gotten it for other stories, but like past sins, I've gotten not just personal messages on fan fiction, but I put my uh, author email at the bottom of each chapter and I've gotten emails there that are like, this is like, passing for some people is the gateway fic. It's like, it's the one that gets them reading other fan fiction, and that's really cool for me, because like, hey, I'm getting other authors, some reader, viewers now too, because people, it's like, ah, I don't know about fan fiction. Oh, this one's really good, I'll go try other ones. It's like, <laughs> it's, like, it, it's that first hit. hit. It's that first hit before they go, first one's always free. Yeah, exactly. And it depends too, because there's ones out there that are fantastic, like Past Sins, or uh, Life and Times of Winning Pony, or a hole in the sun that are fantastic. Or uh, the first one I think I ever read that was really got me going was um, Song of Storms of uh, of Skies Long Forgotten uh, by Pegasus Rescue. Was that PRB? I think that was PRB that I, I got it from. Uh, I could be wrong. It might be Twenty Fourth Pegasus. But anyway, uh, there's really good ones out there. At the same time, I've read some stories that I have. I've gotten three paragraphs and gone like I'm done with this one. Uh, so they can be really bad too. Uh, <laughs> And um, if you if you are a fan of someone's writing and you interact with them, and then maybe you decide you know that you know you have a story that's ready to publish for the first time, or you have something you know maybe you wrote a side story to past sins or something, and if you've been talking with them, a lot of times you've already built up a rapport with an author, you've built up a rapport with an editor, and you can say, hey, um, I was wondering if you could take a quick look over over this fic, or if I could bounce this idea off of you that's kind of related to what you did. 
And it's, they're a lot more likely to do that if you've talked with them before, because I mean, you've been following them, you've, you've, had, you've spent time with them and you've conversed and commented, and maybe you know the author didn't comment back, but a lot of uh, authors will know the name, or like my case, I'm terrible with names, on film fiction, make sure you have like a like a fairly uh, consistent uh, icon, a, a consistent avatar image. If you change your avatar every week, like a lot of us that aren't good with names, do lose your identity. Yeah, so you I'm like, oh, you <laughs> or, but, like, that, but, but if you keep it here. somewhat consistent, like Seeker and the Lurker is right. always Aku themed, right? Of yeah, some variety. And 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 that makes it uh, easier to interact with the community when you have a more uh, stable uh, profile. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I've been doing this way too long and I don't even notice that anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, but, um, which is another one of the yeah, I can definitely say to that, it's like, generally my rule of thumb for comments is, is that just because I try to focus on my own writing, if like, I get a random pre-read request from someone I haven't seen before, then <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm just trolling you. Yes, and you were about to make me feel guilty, but it's like, I just, if I answered all those, then I would be doing editing and pre reading, not my own writing. But if you pitch, I want to pitch ideas at me, I can generally comment on something like a page on PM. Okay, I can glance over that and give you some feedback on stuff like that. But if you're um, someone who's been, I've been going back and forth with a lot, and it's like someone I know, and then it's like, then I'm much more inclined to give the thing a read over. I'm not going to catch grammar. Grammar is bad to this person. That's why I'm not exactly. <laughs> 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 like, I can comment on content yeah. really well. For the record, I am not an author. I have never written a story in my life. I am an editor. I bang words with hammers until all the commas are dead. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, this actually came from a comment on one of the stories I was editing with uh, Web of Hope and Jake the Ginger. Um, I'll, I'll, so did this quote, actually, the, the best, uh, what is it? The most epic candy should be smelted and forged. Uh, also came from another comment we were writing on. That was on Sweet Treats and World of Lights. So, well, and, uh, and the thing about being an editor, pre reader, if you want to, um, if you're new and you're like, you know, I, I am having trouble getting my story seen by more people and stuff like that, you can find other authors to edit and pre read for each other. So, that, you know, it's the idea that, like, hey, I helped uh, Zephyr. Um, and his first story, so the next story I'm, I come out with, I might say, hey Zephyr, so uh, can you give this a look over, and if you like it, would you mind, you know, putting it out there for your followers if you think they like it too. And, you know, you go back and forth and you forge friendships, and you uh, can help build each other's audiences, because, and that's something that, like at first in Thin Fiction and EQD, you had, like, it was what everyone was talking about. But you don't see that as much anymore. I mean, it's still nice when someone blogs about a story that they like and they get a couple extra views. But usually, uh, what you tend to see now more of in the fan fiction community for My Little Pony is people saying, hey, this person has helped me. Um, he's a really good guy. I mean, he helped me, you know, this arc of the story, or he helped uh, bring this out, or he helped fix my problem with this character, or, or you know, I have too many commas. You know, and then he did this story that I that I liked, and I think some of you might like too. It's about this, and a lot of people are more likely to follow something like that than like an EQD post. Um, or mo there's a lot of sites out there now, or or film fiction groups that'll promote stuff, and you s they still don't get a lot of views. But when you're getting a personal personal recommendation from an author who you're friends with, who you've worked with, it it's a lot easier to uh, expand each other's audience that way. Yeah, I mean. Signal boost, what you're talking about is signal boost, basically, mm -hmm. the phrase I think a lot of us like to use for that. It is certainly important, especially for like beginning authors, it's really hard to get a story noticed if you're just, if you don't have followers, if you don't have it published somewhere and stuff. But, I mean, the, in my mind, the right way to go about that is you make friends, you offer to pre-read for people, you comment on stories that you like, you offer to edit for them, and eventually, you know, ask them to do a favor in return for like, you know, hey, can you help me edit this and stuff? And it's a natural part of the community and the networking and all that and stuff. It's, don't abuse it, don't just go beg pinstroke for a signal boost on your brand new fic that you, you've never edited and never seen and stuff. I mean, that's, that's rude to just expect people to do you favors for no reason. But get involved. And it's not just that you have to get somebody really popular either. There's a lot of, I mean, if you, you can make friends with a lot of authors that don't have any pre-readers and need one. And they maybe only have you know 50 or 60 followers, but that's still 50 or 60 more than you might have started with. Well, and something help, about 50 or 60 yeah. followers is that when there's an author who's done a number of stuff and, and people like it and they don't get a lot more followers for new fix, maybe they just don't get the signal boost they want, 
they tend to be a little bit more dedicated. When you have a smaller fan base that, that you put out stuff, you tend to see a lot more people that are like more dedicated to that person. So yeah. small small people can give you just as much of a signal boost as large people. I mean, depending on on the situation. I, I think another part of that too is, and I'll get to that one in just a minute. Um, I, I think another part of that too is recognition. When you get people that pre-read or edit it for you, or um, that you've pre pre-read stuff or edited stuff for, um, do a good job of, of documenting that. Just put a little. We don't want like much, but I, put, a, put a note down at the bottom of the description like story, edited by and pre-read yeah. by. It's like, I do that that's, for every chapter. Right, right. Every and every that's chapter. polite. That's that's yeah. just what you want to do. For it's me. it's one of the ways that, like, I've had people that have contacted me to ask me to pre-read stuff just because they've seen my name at the bottom of other yeah. stories they read. Uh, and I'm like, I, I'm not an author. How did you find me? They're like, well, I saw you pre-read this one. And be like, okay, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and on the subject of finding pre-readers and editors, it's like, for me, just the, the last two pre-readers and editors I've kind of worked with have all been ones that have, like they already they did a bit of editing on com new comments or PNs just voluntarily, and it's like hey you did this this was nice it's like and it's like for them it's like for them it's like they get to see something before I go <coughs> out to the public right and, and that's in itself is sometimes a cool little awesome bone sometimes. yeah it's a, yeah. well and one of the other things it's not just about getting. Uh, editors and pre-readers are going to move on towards about that interaction a little bit later. But one other thing is, you know, maybe if even if you're a popular author, say you have a whole bunch of people who usually edit pre-read, uh, it's not uncommon for people to want to change it up a little bit to get a, I'm sorry to get some different views <laughs> on stuff to see how you do stuff, change it up. Because I mean, that's how you learn and grow. So you might have um, one person who's been editing with you for a while, and you know. You've got it down to now when they edit your stuff, they're only making a couple of comments because you've, they've worked with you and you've, you've improved as an, as an author. And if you're editing and pre-reading for others, that's a great way to learn as well because a lot of times people will use Google Docs and you can see multiple people's comments so you can see comments other people made that you missed. And a lot of times even some of those comments are opinions in that like the Oxford comma, some people really like the Oxford comma, some people don't like it. And with the Oxford comma is if you do something and some, or something comma, something comma, and something, that last comma is the Oxford comma. Um, but, yes, I, I love the Oxford comma. I have seen instances where I, where it was inappropriate to use, and that's the thing. Rules in writing are oftentimes guidelines. A lot of the greatest authors will break one or two rules here or there, but they'll do it in a very specific way in a certain circumstances. And commas are one of the worst ones. The rules on commas are just insane, which is why I'm so picky about them. Uh, um, and, it's, 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 but, and sometimes it just, it's not, it's like the sin for me sometimes is just, I get going faster than my fingers can Go. Oh yeah, yeah it's like it's like oh this is being awesome, and, and, and then you look good. back ten minutes later and oh it's my god, it's what? like oh, all the it's are comma <laughs> are apostrophe and I know none yeah. of them are supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> and some of that too is it's that's why it's good to have more than one if you're doing editing. It's more mm -hmm. good to have more than you know good to have more than one editor is because there are times even when I'm pre-reading, I'll miss stuff. Uh, and other people will catch it and be like, oh, thanks for catching that. Uh, I'm sorry, you had a question that we started. Yeah, it's not a question, it's more of a plug. I want to plug the, uh, have you ever heard of the writers group on fanfiction.net? It's like probably the biggest group. On there's a number of writers groups. Well, yeah, it's, it's just called the writers group and there's an IRC there and there's a lot of really helpful interactive people. Well, sometimes it's not too busy there, but I would recommend everyone go on there and make some new friends because you can find aspiring authors, people can yep. pre-read for you, you can pre-read for them. It's a really good, small community. And, and there, the there's a lot of groups like that on fan fiction. Uh, if you have like a, a, a romance fic, you know, you're shipping two ponies together, uh, you can go to the shipping thing and you, and you can, you know, there'll be a shipping group and they'll have, you know, a thousand or thirteen hundred people on it. Or you might find one that only has 80 people on it. And then they will also have an editing and pre-reading there. Mm -hmm. So if you're having trouble finding editors and pre-readers, I mean, you can go to your favorite stories, but you know, if they're really popular stories, there, you know, that editor peer reader might have already had several other requests and their time might just be taken up. So you can go to these groups and you can find people. And you know what, if you find someone and they edit your fic and it doesn't, you know, your interaction with each other, you know, they're not catching things that you're not, maybe you both write the same way or, um, or they're just not having a good time. It's or, like it's like sometimes yeah. people will sign on to be an editor and they won't really just have a good time. Well, it's just like, there's no, no sense forcing the person to stay or you're, you yourself forcing to continue through it. It's like, 
It's like, I'm sorry, the story is just not doing it for me. Well, and a lot of times the, the editors pre readers won't even like, they, they'll like say, like, oh, that story sounds interesting. And then they'll read it and they'll be like, you know what, your writing style just isn't mine. And you know what, don't take it personally. If an editor or pre reader is reading something and they don't like something that you read, um, you know, it, that, look at that as an op opportunity to have some discourse. Like, well, why don't you like it? Well, like, well, I really didn't like it when you shipped these two ponies together because they got together because. This pony, like Fluttershy, was the one approaching Rainbow Dash, and like this doesn't make any. This doesn't make any sense. I mean, I mean, you'd think at least, like at least have some like, build up or something. I, I actually had. It's like I, um, the, it's like I, the, the one time I threw part of a story up on the, the po pony, bo uh, pony board or whatever boards, one of the the four chan break off boards, because I had someone telling me to flip flop, um, Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash because. They felt Rainbow Dash is bravado, but if face it, this is for Haunting Nightmare. Bravado, but if she's faced with something scary, she will kind of start to show 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 some of that yellow in her tail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can uh, definitely look at, you know, maybe a, a disagreement as a chance to discuss it because you might decide. I mean, you're the. I mean, if you're the author, you have the the final say. But it's always good to listen to your editor or pre-reader because even if you disagree with them, it's good if they know why because they might learn something too. But also, they just—I mean, a lot of editors, pre-readers will just stop editing, pre-reading for you if you know they don't feel that it's a, it's a mutual conversation where it's, "Hey, boss, what about this? No. What about this? No. What about this? Good job." It's like, well, it, it's it's very straightforward. And it's not. Not and one thing, one thing like we've had that conversation. <laughs> 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 and um, one thing that it's like I usually, it's like I don't encourage it, but it ends up happening because illustrious Q goes through and he just makes jokes. It's like, it's like let the editors and just let the editors and kind of have fun. It's like if you, it's like I'm writing something that's involving mod at the moment, <laughs> and it's like someone asks, well, how did the rocks fall? They fell like rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and Illustrious just la was laughing his head off at that because, but it's, and he made a comment about it. And I'm sure the other pre readers will be making comments like, if the pre pre if you get multiple pre readers and others in the same story at the same time, they'll bounce off their own comments and it'll be oh, more yeah. fun for them. You end up with comments like, the most epic candy should be smelted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is important to have fun. I mean, this is something we're all doing because it's fun. I mean, we're not like here because this is our day job. So if you're not having fun at it, like. Don't get offended if people aren't having fun with your story. If they if they're not right for it, let them go. Vice versa. If you're trying to pre-read for someone because you wanted to, you know, start being interactive, but it's no fun. That's fine. Just be polite about it. You can be friendly. You can dislike something someone else likes and still be friends. I mean, hmm. As long as you're not nasty about it. Right, right. I mean, yes. be polite, be nice. Like say sorry, you know, just you know, I'm gonna work on something else. This isn't my thing, you know. Hey, good luck with it and stuff mm -hmm. and yeah. And sometimes you're busy, and you're yeah, just like, exactly. you know what, I, this chapter, I won't be able to make the deadline you want. I have a couple of points. One of them says, uh, a Stephen King quote, it, he says, to write as human, to edit as divine. And <laughs> also, if you have a good editor, be nice to a good editor, because professional copy editor's time is worth starting $20 an hour. And if you're getting it done for free from someone who's about that good, that is a real treasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or someone, I mean, you can have a pre uh, editor, pre-reader, who, you know what, they don't actually fix a lot of stuff, but they make a lot of comments that you build off of, and you, you might think, well, you know, they're not really helping me, why am I, you know, including him, I can include someone else, and stop wasting his time, and then you realize that, wait, like, half the story is basically ideas that he's given me. Well, and I, I that, that's kind of a, a good example, too, because how many different ideas that we put into all of the side. Oh yeah, there's, there's I, it's turned from originally it was supposed to be what five or six chapters and <laughs> well, originally now, you're like, oh, right now I've got story and now it's a hundred thousand words. Yeah, a hundred thousand <laughs> words and he's going, I can't keep up, I've got too many I we, we have a separate document that we're using for comments. Just on stuff we've come up with for ideas for later stories. Yeah. That's <laughs> a good ten pages. Yeah, that would be like point. a third sequel if it ever get around to it. But no, it <laughs> is important to note that like it, there's different types of pre-reading into it. I mean, you can get assistance on a story in more than one way. It's not just, hey, can you find out where I typoed, where I spelled something wrong, and misused a comma. I mean, there's copy editing. There's also pre-reading for, hey, this story was actually interesting versus it was boring versus I was really confused at this part. And then there's actually, you know, some of the brainstorming stuff, especially in longer things. If you have people that are assisting you with that, they might be throwing out ideas. I mean, there's stuff that was comments, you know, five chapters ago that ended up being story elements later because that's a really good idea. You're right, we should get that character involved. She would be perfect for that. 
So, you know, there's all sorts of different levels people can be involved in. Some people are great just at the technical editing, let them do it. Some people aren't, aren't going to forget all those typos just like you did, but they maybe have some good ideas. So, you know, involve a lot of people. I, I generally run my own editing and pre reading in two stages where I have a set, it's like I'll let a few people in there. I know we're going to be good for the content, and then I'll let in the, the next pre readers set. before editors. A lot of people do it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because, because if you're letting pre 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 readers in after editors, then you're making changes that are might be riddled with editing errors, and so it's. Now we've been talking from the author's perspective. What about from the editor's perspective? If you're if you're commenting on someone's fic and maybe they're they're not providing, you know, you're not getting that discourse. I mean, like. What are some of the things that you've done? Um, on, on the technical side of editing, on the, the copy editor side, a lot of that is grammatical rules. And so you have to be familiar with those. And a lot of those don't require interactive comments. Um, it's this comma shouldn't be here, or this should be capitalized, or, um, you know, th there, so there's that. And those don't require comments. On the flip side of that, um, on the editing side, sometimes people will say this, and you'll, you'll have to make that comment of, this doesn't sound like that character, which is one of the great things about My Little Pony. We've got such well-developed characters in such a rich world that when I read Applejack or I read um, Sweetie Belle, I can hear their voices in my head. I know what they sound like. I know what they're supposed to sound like. Um, but you'll, you'll get people that write these comments. Like, I've had a bunch of people, Pinkie Pie is insanely difficult to write. Mm -hmm. And I've had people make a lot of stuff <laughs> on Pinkie Pie, and it's, they, they write it, and you go, this is too much of just Pinky being Pinky, or this doesn't sound like something Pinky would say. Um, and then there's people like Jake the Ginger, who is one of the best uh, best Pinkie Pie writers I've ever seen, uh, wherein he says stuff, and it's such a unique blend of this is Pinky being Pinky, and this is something that actually makes sense, <laughs> that I'm like, I, I don't have anything to add, dude. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just go, yeah. Uh, uh, and so there, there's that aspect of from the editing side too, and we've run into that one, especially on some of the bigger stories I've worked on, like uh, Hole in the Sun or Three Wishes or um, Unbound Skies, where we've had characters that uh, we've had Rarity say some things that they didn't sound like Rarity, uh, and so you have to go in and you have to say. Maybe this would be phrased better this way, uh, and that's more of a, a perspective comment than a technical editing or comment. If, it's still just as or important. if it's if it's more than a one-on-one -on -one conversation, it's like maybe move this dialogue to yeah, I thought, yeah, and I, I think I made a, a couple of points on that on uh, somewhere in it was three wishes where we've rearranged a couple of paragraphs. It's like okay, this paragraph is I realize it's all one person speaking, but you need to cut that in half and move this paragraph up and this paragraph down below it. So it's more of an interactive conversation. Uh, and so there's that aspect of it too, where you have to pay attention to flow of dialogue and the, the cadence that people, that, that you know, different characters are using. Uh, and a big part of that, and this is gonna sound weird, but a big part of that is read stuff out loud. Uh, especially if you're editing. Don't just read it on paper. Say it out loud, because sometimes it changes. It'll look fine on paper, and it'll be technically good. And then you say it out loud, and you go, that that character would never ever say that, or say it in that. There's way. also because like I'm dyslexic and ADHD, so like I'll get distracted by stuff and it'll sound wrong and I won't catch it. There's also software out there, and I don't have any off the top of my head, but there's software that you can plug in your story and it'll read it to you. And you might, you know, it, it, it's not going to have the correct intonations, but you can still catch a lot of stuff. And a lot of times, the intonation is what matters. So if something's reading it flat to you. You'll hear like, whoa, that that has completely different meaning. That that doesn't sound like this person's like, you know, having an inside joke or being comforting to the other person. That just sounds like they're being mean. And so then you you know you might have you know they put an arm on the other pony and then they see the joke and then they laugh um. or not. <laughs> so th there there's different ways that you can go about doing it. And um, speaking of something that I thought of that I forgot before was that you can have editors and pre-readers for specific things. I have a story, I because I've been working on this and some other stuff and moving, I haven't been put out a story in a while, but you know, it's it's basically ready, it needs to do some editing, and I, I'm okay with leaving it to wait till after the con because I want to get someone I, I want to make it you know good for my readers. So I have one person who's written the best Gilda and actually
actually best disc run I've ever seen. And I have him specifically ooh, for writing Gilda to help me fix Gilda. And I, and he's like, you know what? You need to fix this, 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 and this. I didn't rewrite all of Gilda. Other people didn't get that. So if you find someone who's really good at something, you can ask. Like you can ask uh, Penstroke. You know, well, I'm not going to volunteer him. <laughs> but <laughs> like, for example, if you're like, you know, I have this uh, story that's kind of like in uh, past sins, and I want to run this uh, I, this basic concept for this villain by you. He might say, you know, watch out for this. Um, you might want to focus a little bit more on that kind of stuff. And then you might find someone else who will actually be able to be willing to sit and look through that specific thing for your story. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a good point too in dealing with things like past sins or uh, the winning verse is probably the, the biggest one of, of the bunch that I've seen where it's, you've it's, got this. There was a time it, it, it seemed like there was always something in the feature box about the, with yeah. from the winning verse. Yeah well the Life and Times is now officially over and closed. Uh, they, they have posted the final chapter and it was fantastic. Uh, there are still some side stories going off on it but for a long time, uh, Winning Pony was the thing. Uh, and the, the, it's called the Winning Verse, come on. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, it, there's a lot of side stories that are all written from, there, there's the, what I would call the main story. EQD actually says it's uh, the incredibly apologetic letters of Rainbow Dash is the main story, but at this point it's become uh, Life and Time of the Winning Pony. Cool. But EQD is whatever's first. Is right, it's whatever's first. So. Uh, but that notwithstanding, there's a lot of stories in that in that setting uh, that are both tied directly into the main storyline, and then just other ponies from that that same uh, world. Um, and if you're going to write stuff for that, get a hold of the person that wrote the main story that you're writing off of, it and make sure it's okay with them before you do it. Uh, so there's there's some. I actually have four blog posts. Yes. Because I kind of got tired of trying to help me right. answer, can <laughs> right. I use next? And well, and like Winningverse, they actually went through and they made a list of FAQs of how does things, how do things work in this, in this, this universe, in this world that we've created. Uh, and so there's some pretty specific things about um, magic and, and in that particular case about um, making ponies. Uh, we, we won't say it any more than that, but uh, and, and how that can happen and the different aspects involved. Um, and for the record, that's there's no flop in that story. There's a lot of innuendo, but there's no flop. Um, so uh, bear that in mind. Um, but there, there, you you want to get permission from the people that wrote that because you don't want to go and and irritate them to the point where they're actually going to badmouth you or they're never going to want anything to do with you again. So later down the road, if you do want to prove your well, for them, and you also have instances like K Cap who did um, follow the question, which is probably the most read another one. Thing. And there, there's literally what was it? There's over 500 side stories now. Oh, so like there's, there's, there's yeah, that, that I take that back. That would be the biggest one for <laughs> time for it. Yes. Um, but uh, sir, I mean, K Cat, she doesn't like to respond, or she he doesn't respond to the uh, to a lot of messages a lot of times. So I wanted to do an interview with her one time. So I tried to message her, and she didn't get back. I'm like, oh, like I don't want to harass her. That and that's something. If, if something, if someone doesn't respond, I mean. Let it go. I mean, it's one thing if, like, you see on fin fiction that they haven't been on in 30 weeks and suddenly they're on again and you resend a message. Um, but if if someone's not very open to the community, it, let let them be. See if there's something else. Cause a lot because a lot of times, like with KCAT, who not only is there like multiple groups on fin fiction, but there's also an entire website dedicated to side stories and the main story for Fall Out Equestria. Um, you can find information there because KCAT will have been in contact with one of the people in the group and will have made an official post about something and because she, I mean KCAT came out and said you can do whatever you want with my story it's free it's open don't ever charge anyone for anything yeah. and that was basically basically it and there's more and there's a lot of people who analyze her work and they can help you even if the author can't yes. so if, if the author is busy it's like it was something I was hearing someone talk about um, who was what was it for? It was like someone doing show writing or something or for the back, not at, at this convention, at, for some other thing. No, oh, that was from work. That's right. That was with Flint. But um, I'm working with people. We're people. Um, but it's that sometimes the fans know the work better than the author. Yes. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I've done that before, where you start writing a fic, and then you go back to one of the previous chapters, like, oh, I forgot I did that. 
like, man, I was cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, and that's where sometimes it helps to have really nerdy authors. Like right now, I'm actually putting together a timeline for uh, Hole in, for the Three Wishes stuff. Because yeah, I forgot what I named some of the characters. And it's it's, it's, it's my own story yeah. at one point. Like and they showed up for like you know. Five and times. we're bouncing back and forth between different points in time on the timeline and stuff. And I'm like, okay, so we have to have a cohesive timeline, and so you can look at this and go, okay. We are here in this timeline, but we're talking about this event here. So that event that we referenced up here hasn't happened yet. So we can't use that. <laughs> um, it can get really confusing when you do the bigger fix, and it certainly helps if you have people that are willing to assist with that more complex sort of plotting. Especially if you have time travel. But, oh, yes. 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 <laughs> that, that, that's a whole yes. other can of worms for sure. Yes. The, um, it's multiple cans of But yeah, the, <laughs> the, 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 the thing that you guys get though is that. We're writing fan fiction. We're already writing stuff based on someone else's work. When people want to write off your work, you want to write off of someone else's, and especially when they're in the fan community, it's just polite. I mean, it's not legally obligated since we're all in fan fiction, but it's just polite to say, hey, is this okay with you that I'm doing the spinoff? Like you said, some authors like KCAT have a blanket policy. Yeah, everyone can write spinoffs, you just can't sell them. Cool. Uh, other people will have more it's general like policy, my, just as long as My general policy is, Go ahead, do it. It's like it's the internet. I can't really stop right. you. If you really I want to respect that you my don't wishes, dirty like, stories with it, these nice little characters. Exactly. Like, so please like, stay away from that if you can. Yeah, I can't think really stop me. But you know, dirty. but it's just polite to ask. I mean, that's a great thing about community. One of the other things I wanted to get to about community though was it's not just all editing, period. It's yes, yeah. yeah. There's this part of what is community outreach, especially as an author, is. Trying to get just good old fashioned readers. You want you want people to read your story because I mean authors. I mean that's that's what what we like. I mean authors love having people read and comment on their stories, whether they're editors or not. And I always, but I mean comments like we mentioned earlier, always feel so much better than just likes and stuff. But if you want people to keep coming back to your story, interact with them. And when people comment on your story, they've taken the time to smash words into a keyboard because of something you did, something that was in your imagination. That's awesome. Let them know that. Thank them for their comments, even when they're negative, even when they're telling you what you did wrong in a story. That's useful too. So long as they're not being nasty about it. Even if they're being nasty, thank them and just, I mean, but you know, in a very, you don't have to like say, yes, you're right, no, yeah, I'm a totally horrible person. But you can say, well, I thank you for your opinion, thank you for taking the time to comment. You know, uh, I you don't even have to say you disagree, you can just leave it at that. Other people will see that and see that you can take criticism and will be more encouraged to comment when they have something that's a more realistic criticism. The other part of that is that when you comment on things, people realize they're actually interacting with the author. They like this work that you wrote. When they see that they actually have direct contact with you, it encourages people to read you. I, most of the time, when I see that little notification that says so-and-so is following you and I've got a new follower, it's after I've replied to a batch of comments. I mean, I'll let one or two or three comments build up sometimes or more when it's a new release. But when I go back and reply to those individual people, I'll usually get a couple new followers out because they see that I'm actually paying attention and reading their comments and they know it, and that really goes a long way towards building community. Well, and, but, and sometimes, um, I'll try to make this with you, Dustin. Um, sometimes you won't have a comment to make on someone. They're just like, because like they end like a comment stream or something, like two people are having a conversation you know, within the comments for your story and they end it. It's okay for you to just go hit the thumbs up because sometimes they'll go and look back at the comment stream and they're like, oh, some people thumbed up my comment. Like, that's really cool. I mean, it's it's not like it, it gets followers or it's not like it's, it's a direct comment back to them, but it, it still, you know. It at least lets them know that you read it. Well, it's, maybe it's not you, but right. people like it, and people will have comment, you know, comment discussions in a story, sometimes about completely different stories. And you know what? That's you pretty much always okay unless yeah. it's inappropriate or something. Yeah. You don't have, I, I, you unless don't it's like, like people having a troll argument, it's like that's the one time I'll kind of step in. It's like, Dude, guys, please, if you if you must continue this conversation, do it over PM. It's like I'm, yep. gonna, I'm shutting this down. Yeah. Now we did have one uh, question before oh, we did. I, I'm sorry. So actually, one of the things I um, typically do is when I'm writing somebody else's, when I'm writing stories based off of somebody else's work, I always put the dis I always the disclaimers at the top of my. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Top of my stories because I don't want this. This has happened to me a couple of times. You don't want to steal anybody's original idea. Right. You must always give them credit because mm -hmm. it's really their property. It's really yeah. their ideas. Mm -hmm. So his comment was to make sure that if you are doing something based off of someone else's work, and even if it's not a direct thing, if it's like you know what this inspired me, make a comment on it. It's it's basically the greatest like 
comment that an author can have is they're like, oh, I was so inspired by your work, I wrote something of my own, and I, I, you know, I'm giving you credit and everything like that, and that that's one of the greatest, like, it, it, even if it's not direct, it's one of the greatest things you can get. Um, can, just to check, can everyone in the back hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We are not using microphones yeah. at all. It's not going to be Sunday when we can't talk. We, we had, um, I, I'm part of the production staff, and we had some, some technical issues come up where we didn't have some of the equipment that we needed because the places we needed to go to get it are closed because it's 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. scrambling. So, uh, That's what the community Oh, uh, I was just going to mention, too, that, uh, like Zephyr said, it's not, when you're, when you're, Communicating with people when you want to be part of the community, a lot of the times you have conversations that aren't even related to what you started at. Uh, when I, the first time I talked to him, friends. Yeah, it was a, it was a PM on his story on. Uh, no, I actually made three comments on another story that was not belonging to either of us. Like, that oh, was, was yeah. that it? Yeah, like, like, yeah I commented and, and then you replied back and we were right, discussing and some other story. So we just got to talking and now, I mean, we're we're pretty good friends and you know we uh, we go and we hang out and we you know go to the gun range or we we go out and we grab a beer sometimes and that's just how it is. Um, so a lot of it isn't just fan fiction stuff. Don't be afraid to interact with people. Uh, get out there and, and talk to them, and don't be afraid to meetups. You know, go to meetups and that kind of thing. Convention or convention. Yeah, go to a convention. We really suggest that if you haven't been to one, you should go to a convention. And actually, and buy the really expensive badges so we have a bigger budget for next year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, um, and actually on top of that, um, one thing that you saw a, uh, that you see a lot in a lot of conventions is writing not being taken as seriously as other forms of media. There's a, a lot of view of writing that, well, since everyone learns to write in school, everyone knows how to write. And you know what? Technically, no, they don't. Technically, <laughs> technically, I've seen a lot of it. Technically, I, I, I they're supposed to. Technically, they're supposed to. <laughs> but they don't have visual. Well, and some people, I mean, they get their, they don't write, but they can literally they can sit down and they can just good story, and you're like, like I, I asked you to step up and prove it, and you know what, that probably, you know, you actually did really good, you should be a writer, and you're like, well, anyone can write, and the thing is, is that writing well and writing to audiences that people like and improving your craft is more than just putting words on a page, it is reaching out to the community, and one of the things that we wanted to do here at Everfree Northwest, and this is a shameless plug, is we actually have some workshops, and I'm just going to do this later, but I think this is actually a good time to mention that. We have a workshop each day called the Open Reading and Critique Workshop. So, ORC, Open Reading and Critique. And you can bring even an electronic copy, about 650 words of the story right there. Do you want me to explain that? Basically, yeah. like, uh, that that's, it's, it's, it, I put him in charge of it, so. Basically what we're doing is these quick little workshops, bring the intro to a story. It's like 600, 700 words, you get about five minutes to read it at a table. Everyone critiques it for 60 seconds. You just go in a circle, and you, it's a great quick fire way to get feedback and just see what other people are sort of liking what they say. The good part about that is that you meet these people you're sitting at the table with, you hear some of the stuff they just wrote, and afterwards, you might have made new friends and you can talk about it more. If you want to talk in more depth about it after the work and stuff, it's a great way to both meet fellow authors that are serious about trying to get better and stuff. Well, and talking with yeah. people in person is also good because sometimes people like leave a comment and it'll come out like, oh, like he really didn't like it. and. Like, I'm sure that's happened to you a couple of times where people, like, wanted to change the whole thing. I mean, it's common in, in actual, for actual writers who are approaching publishers. The publisher will say, like, this needs to be tweaked, this needs to be tweaked, and then the author will, like, begrudgingly, like, rewrite entire paragraphs or chapters or even entire stories and send it back. It's like, no, like, your story was good. Like, it just needed, like, these small little tweaks. It didn't need to be rewritten or anything like that. So. That said, um, go watch Art of Dress, and we'll come yeah, to the yeah. I'm sorry, suited for success, and we'll just call that good. Uh, so, <laughs> lesson over. Yeah. So it's, it's really good to meet people in person and talk with them, because you also might find out that, you know, you match up with someone, and, and you, you make great pals, and you can follow up, and you exchange numbers, and emails, and fan fiction accounts, and you know, you never know, you two might be the great duo that come out of fan fiction or something. And if I could plug, uh, for those of us who are, are local in the Seattle area, we do have a great uh, Seattle Brownies meetup group yes. that has lots of good... Uh, it's yes. basically how the con got started. And that's, uh, it's on meetups.com. Yes. Yes. Meetup. Yes. yes, okay, good. Um, we have regular meetups for various, we we'll go out to dinner, we, we uh, watch new episodes, all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to do something like that with other writers, we also have the Chill Outs Friday and Saturday night. Which last year a lot of people just you know casually came for. I mean Ze Zephyr casually stopped by on the way to the uh, to the pony stock and you never made it, did you? 
Uh, I, I I don't know if I ever made it. All I know is that like some yeah, I'm on writing staff because I accidentally like, stumbled into the, the room last year at Everfree. So you know, now I'm running workshops. Yeah, it's, it's a great place to just too many works. Well, and you don't have to talk about writing either. I mean, they're talking right, about right. You know, going out and getting beer. And if, if you're 21 or yes. older, <laughs> then you're uh, you, can, you can find people to, to do that kind of stuff with, or you can talk about anime. I mean, it's when you meet other people who are of a similar mind. You don't even have to do it. You might find someone, and you might be great together and you know what they might not you might not you know flush between an editor pre-reader on story or something like that you might bat some ideas off but you know you might find out that you two are both just the biggest fans of Godzilla and gosh <laughs> darn it you know it's time for I, the I've got Cleve Hall's number we got this <laughs> uh, yeah some, some of the ideas that you, you write about that are kind of like overused like uh, um, like there's certain ideas like uh, uh, Crossovers, those are done a lot. Some of them, yes. So yeah, so it's like yeah. is, is that's why. Is there a way to like still make it interesting and like? It's like be like, you know, be somewhat aware of what's going on regarding. It's like be somewhat aware of what's going on with that particular like, for example, crossover you want to do, and try to find a, a way to make it different. It's well, like that's the standard. Target audience. Yeah, the exactly. Right. Is target audience. I mean, totally not a brony is a friend of a lot of ours, and he has like 1,700 followers. He actually did a story that only had 67 views in the first month, and he has 1,700 followers. And it's not that there was a bad story. Everyone who read it liked it, but it was an idea that was out there that didn't appeal to a lot of people. So when you're doing something like a crossover. Um, you can understand that you know maybe your story will appeal to new authors, or maybe will appeal to authors who've read a crossover more. It goes more in depth and explores a specific idea that hasn't been seen as much in that. Yeah. Right. Follow Equestria. Right. Every single story that's popular within the Follow Equestria fan fiction sub community. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that ties back to the thing. thing. Knowing where your audience is is if you write a Harry Potter crossover, you need to find those other pony fans that are also Harry Potter fans and. Sure, everyone else might be thinking, okay, it's still just Harry Potter, so to them it's the same as everything else, but your slightly unique take on Hermione's personality in this one might be that thing that's different enough for them that are really dedicated to that and, and so On that note, that story is called Hocus Pocus by PRB. Yeah. And there's a lot of other ones too, but yes. But um, to, 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 to kind of continue on that, I think he had a clarification. Because I, I, I hit a dead end somewhat, like, I, I, I keep on having this, like, equilibrium between, like, one, uh, one like versus one dislike. <laughs> and this, uh, my story right now that I'm writing, it has, like, 32 likes and then 31 dislikes, and it's got, like, so many views, but, you know, people are still disliking it. Ask, ask for comments. Like, in your, at the end of your chapters, like, put a note saying, hey, you know, I totally understand if you don't like my, if you don't like this, but do me a favor, let me know why. If you're doing a dislike, let me know why. I'm curious, I'm seeing this. Just yeah. be polite and upfront about and it. Hopefully people will tell you why and you'll maybe be able to learn from it. And if you're seeing that a lot, do that um, at the end of the first chapter. I do it at the end of every chapter. The first chapter. If you're seeing something that's a theme, especially a lot of people making comments, maybe they only read the first chapter. And, hey, look, someone, you know, because they'll just be on fiction fiction. Oh, it's a recent story. This sounds interesting. They click it up. I didn't like it because of this reason, and then they'll just move on. They won't see the, the later posts that you make or blogs or stuff like that. So you want to post in the story. Um, you do see a lot of first-time authors saying in the story description, you know, hey, this is my first story. Please leave comments. And you know what? You'll see a lot of those authors get a lot less views but a lot more comments because there's a lot of people who will say, you know what? I haven't seen enough. Uh, I haven't read a story from a new author in a while. And, you know, they'll go and they'll actually, you know, say, hey, it's a new story from a, a new author or it's uh, something that they're trying a new style. Sure, I'll read it and I'll give some feedback. And there are people who will actually go around and do that. It, it can be hard to, to get them. I mean, the best way to do that is to do a group post or a post in a group about like, hey, I have a story. It's got some likes and dislikes. Can someone take a look at it and maybe help me figure out what path to go down or like where the issue is? Or Because it might be they don't like the crossover matchup. It might be they don't like one of the characters. It might be that you need to get another or a better editor or pre-reader just to go over things. Right. Well, and it, it could be too that uh, it's just something that you haven't really tried before. Like, I don't know if we have any shipping fans in here, but um, Sweet Treats and Royal Delights, the, the comment that this, the, or the, the story that this particular comment on my shirt came from, uh, it's a Twibon ship, and nobody, almost nobody had ever done that. Um, and so when Jake started writing it, he's like, hey, do you want to pre-read this? And I said, sure, I'll give it a shot. Uh, and he said, I'm not really sure how this is going to work or if we can make it into a decent story at all, but 
Uh, we went, and it's, I think, six chapters in now, and so far I like it. Uh, well, and that's well, the other thing. If, if you have an idea and you don't think you can do it, you can ask another author, like, hey, so you, I've seen you do this. I mean, I did this with actually a uh, Snapple fix, so snails and apple blue. And literally, there was no other story on the site, but I went to, um... That's so, uh, actually, I, 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 Anyway, I oh, you'd think it'd be a terrible ship, but I had this weird idea, and I'm like, I can't write this type of shipping because a lot of it is from the perspective of Snails being, like, really smart, but kind of, like, offbeat, so, like, he doesn't like confrontation, but he, he thinks in his head and he notices a lot of things, so he's actually, like, kind of smart, he's just slow at being smart. So I went and I got uh, help. I can't remember that author's name, but um, it, I was really happy with how he wrote it. And I worked with him and I, and I, I edited and pre-read for him and helped guide the story and some of the ideas he came up with. I'm like, you know what? I know I'm, I, I actually commissioned it from him because he's busy, but um, uh, I liked the ideas that he was coming up with. And so the story changed. And so it ended up being this really adorable thick about this really like nerdy nice guy and this girl and you know who doesn't like nerdy nice guys and cute girls in this room? Well, I mean, that's yeah. like, I think another good example of that would be like Rainbow Pie. Mm -hmm. I mean how nobody would think that those two characters would go together. And yet mm, one of my favorite shows is Rainbow. Rainbow. Somebody's thought they go together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, Good point. <laughs> there's nothing new under the sun, or yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's there's different ways to approach it, and if, if you're in a situation where you think it's not going to work, bounce ideas off of someone. I mean, it could be a friend, it could be someone you follow who follows you. I mean, if someone leaves comments and, and on your fix every once in a while, and you like the comments, you can go to them. Hey, I had this idea, and I want to bounce this idea off of you because I like the comments you make. Right. Going back to something you said just a minute ago, like, you were talking about that there are people that go around and try and look for mm -hmm. new stories and comment on new authors. And one of something I really would like to encourage everyone to do: be that pony. Go in there mm -hmm. f because an author with Passing you know on. ten thousand viewers and hundreds of comments on every chapter, they're getting a lot of readers. feedback. The people that the people that don't new authors and stuff need a lot more encouragement. Find those less popular picks. Find those ones where because there is a lot of hidden gems out there. There are so many writers. Fan fiction is growing so fast. There's always new authors coming in that can be amazingly good. I've seen so many of them who started just in less than a year and have written some amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. But they only get there because people said, hey, here's an unknown story with only three views on it. I'm going to click it anyway and try and give it a read, and I'm going to comment on it. Especially when you see that. I, be that pony, but make those comments help people out. I, I think you know how much it matters to you as an author? Help that do that for other authors, especially if you start getting a little progress, if you start getting some followers and stuff. Still be in there. I, I think another part of that aspect of that too is be comfortable with what you do, uh, even if you don't think it's very good. Be comfortable with it. Like, it, it it's like if, if you're not if you're not someone who's very comfortable with like heavy gore and that's right. Like, yeah. Don't force yourself to write that kind of story. Right. Well, and even that, I, I put it. It's right up there on my bio on fan fiction. I've got maybe twelve people that follow me. They're all people I work for. Uh, <laughs> um, but I put it right up there in front. It's like, look, I'm not an author. I'm an editor. I don't write my own stuff. Uh, and so I've got no stories to my name. I'm not an author. I don't write. I don't feel comfortable putting myself in that position where I can write. I just don't think I'm that good on a creative aspect of it. But I'm a very good editor, and that I know I can do. And so I'm more than happy to help, but I'm, more, I, I'm comfortable telling people, hey, I'm not, I'm not comfortable doing this other thing. And I get a lot of them, like we uh, Web of Hope and Jake <coughs> Ginger both, tell me you should write stuff. I'm like, I don't feel comfortable as a writer, and so I don't. Well, there's uh, one guy on Food Fiction who has like 600 followers, and all he does is he comments on other people's stories, and he might like help edit. Uh, do you know what the guy named Skeeter? Skeeter. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And he comments on everything. And, and, yes. and every once in a while, he says, "Oh, I'm thinking of writing a story." Then everyone will comment on the same thing and be like, "Nah." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, super trampoline in the back. You had a comment real fast. Oh, I was gonna say one great way I I started doing to get back to the community is. I posted a blog post, I'm getting out there in followers, I have 158 now. I said, hey, send me one of your stories of 5,000 words or less, and I will review it. And I got a lot of responses back there, because you have all these beginning authors who are desperate for, they want to know how they're doing, and so I started reviewing these stories. Some of them are awful, some of them are pretty good. And that's one of the great things about food fiction, there's so many ways to interact with them. Yeah. Uh, we should 
probably ask this one before we get too much further. Did anybody have any particular questions they wanted to ask? One comment I've been trying to sneak in, but you guys have been bouncing off each other like all. It's when it comes to like writing, it's like writing for target audience. It's like this is going backwards. It's like when you start to get out there and followers, then your a target audience is your followers. It's the people who like what you're doing, and it's like people ask me all the time, "Well, more nicks." More dicks and all that stuff. It's like I don't force myself to do that unless I have an idea. But if I have an idea for it, it's like why not do that to the people who have kind of put me where I am? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was only an hour panel, so my bad. <laughs> we will ask. We will take questions though. Don't worry. And you know, if we run out of stuff, we're not going to force it. We're <laughs> <laughs> trying to do a little early. Uh, quick question. So from the from a, a editor slash proofer's point of view. Uh, I was curious to see if you could talk about the uh, the etiquette of of leaving proofing comments on stories versus you know unasked for versus doing it when when people want you to do it. Because I've come You're talking about that. liking the comments? Yes. Um, I've come across that a couple. A good times. general rule of thumb, and this applies to pretty much all of life, uh, but anything critical, um, it, it's especially relevant for um, praise in public. So if you've got nice stuff to say. Put it in the comments where everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. um, it. You know, I really enjoy your stories. They're they're great for this, 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 and this, and this. But uh, anything that comes after but, <laughs> and anything that comes before the word but in a sentence doesn't count. Uh, so always remember that one. Um, so if your comment is I really like your story, da 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 da, but end your sentence with that I really like your story because of da 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 da, and put a period. And then send them a PM and say, but <laughs> you got this, this, and this needed to be fixed. Yeah, um, it's like that's how I definitely like to see it. It's like because then the time it's like I'll go in and fix typos as soon as I'm alerted to them. Right. But then there's I like prefer the but. I actually prefer it, and the reason why is because to me it's they're like, look, I like this, but this is what I had issue with. It's direct and okay, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not and I'm not saying do that. I'm not yeah. I'm not saying don't give that second half of the feedback. I'm saying praise in public. So do it where everybody can see. Criticize in private. Uh, because you don't want to degrade these people and make them, because if you degrade them in public, what happens is they get the, there's this perception where they, they take it too personally, they internalize it, and everybody sees it, and other people will point it out, and then it's this downward spiral, and it's a bad thing. Well, um, and you can't turn that around, though. You can turn that around. And a lot of times, uh, as an author, you need to say, you know what? It's a criticism, it's hard, but you know there's no growth without pain in writing. And right. so you'll, you'll sit down and say, I'm, I know, maybe it's how they portray the character, and maybe you sit down and you explain, I did this because of this reason, this reason, this reason, and this thing coming up, and they're like, and you know, you don't spoil or anything, but they, a lot of times they'll say, you know what, I didn't think about it that way, or right. they'll be like, I get that, but if you had done it like this and this, and like, you know what, I hadn't thought about that, and suddenly it's a productive, and, and so that, that leads to the second half of my comment, is that if you're going to do it, praise in public, criticize in private, when you criticize, don't be mean. Yes. Uh, be critical, but don't. You don't have to call them. You know, you're a horrible person. Yada yada yada. Just, you know, I, I noticed there was an issue with this, and it's an issue because of and and list the set of reasons as to why. And if you can, if at all possible, go. This is a problem, and this might be a possible solution for you. I'm not saying this is the only solution, but this is at least one suggestion. Yeah. Um, so never ever criticize someone unless you can give them at least some sort of a pointer in the right direction. I, I would say I, I um, sort of differ a little on that. I, that's certainly the safe way to do it, to you know, keep all the negative into a private message. I, I think you've got to, if you sort of know the author, you can tell the interaction, you've been following them for a while, you see how they handle criticism and stuff, sometimes it's safer to say, especially if it's something relatively minor, like, oh, you know, I thought it felt a little slow in a few places, but I really like the outcome in this. And if you, can, if you phrase it in a way that it still is going to be overall positive, having the, the but in the public, I think, is actually good. Because first of all, it shows that you were actually critically thinking about the story, not just blindly saying, good job, I want you to just, you know, I'm not just saying, I like this, and that's it. You're giving reasons, and it shows that you actually thought about the story, which I, I as an author, appreciate it when people show in-depth insight into what I've written, positive and negative. I also think that having it in public, in some ways, makes it, uh, it lends to a community discussion. Because some people might say, I, but I didn't like the way you did this character. Someone else might actually come in, before you even get to it, 
and saying, no, I really like that. I think that's a very realistic view of this character for these reasons. And it inspires more discussion as long as everyone is friendly and polite and not getting purple. Yes. If it's you're hurting like, someone, you're doing it wrong. It's, right? but, it's, the old, it's like, I can actually agree with that a bit more. It's like having that kind of negative in there is good. But if you're negative, it's like, I like this, is, but you have typo, typo, typo. Just throw the typos in your Yeah, opinion. typos and little typo links are just obviously like clear. Oh, hey, I wrote up a quick list for you of the 15 like grammatical mistakes you made. Yeah, throw that in here. 30 seconds. Because, then, because then it's like, <laughs> because then it's like, even after they fix it, then there's suddenly this monument in the comments of, oh, these errors were here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I have no bloggers delete. Uh, but they, they, like I fix the typos, that comment doesn't well, need to exist anymore, and, it, and that's fine. Right, right. But sometimes yeah. there's other content in the comment, and right, it's like, right. Mm, and, no. and the flip side of the point is, uh, especially in fan fiction, because this this unexpected pony thing has, has now just <laughs> taken the whole world by storm. Um, and so you get people that write stories, like the one of the guys I started pre-reading for. I think the first one actually that I ever did any kind of editing for, uh, the story never book had, never did a book by its cover. When I read it, there were things that were tripping up red flags in my mind, saying English is not his first language. And so when I told him, I said, "You have there, there are some issues in your story, and I'd like to help you with them." I sent him a PM, and I said, "I get the get the impression from reading this that English is not your first language." And it turns out I was right. He's from Quebec. He's his primary language is French Canadian. Um, and so I, in in the process of helping him edit, not only did I get to help him edit his story and make his story better. Um, and a lot of those comments never even saw the light of day. He used them in his own stuff, and he got better as a result. Um, but he never posted, reposted the story, or went back and edited it. But on the, the flip side of that coin, not only did I get to help him improve his, his writing, but I also got to help him learn English because I had to go. Through, I was going as we were going through. I was trying to teach him. These are the rules for English grammar about capitalization and punctuation, and you know those kinds of things. And so there's that there's that aspect of it as well. Well, and one thing that everyone should be aware of is, depending on where you come from, grammar and spelling changes. I yes. often use the British spellings because I'm dyslexic, so I, I learn some of them the British way. And like, so oh, people will tell me it's well, wrong, and then other people will tell me it's right. And it's, as long as it's consistent, consistency is, is one of the biggest things. And so if you get a new editor partway through a thing, um, and you start, you know, like, oh, this is improving a lot, you might want to have them go through and do, you know, the first couple chapters as well, or the first bit. Um, just so that it'll be consistent, because um, not only are you improving it, but then it sometimes the tone will change a little bit, and so you can you can keep that from happening if you mm -hmm. go, if you go back and have it be consistent. I think um, we had a question here too. Yeah. So oh, we'll we'll get to you next. Um, oh, I guess we had three. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Well, <laughs> go that way. Okay. Um, I have a rather gargantuan sized fic um, that is not on. I think I'm going to throw this to, unless you guys have got it. Well, there's there's a number of different answers for that. Um, I think we'll let the, someone from the community answer. There are some very, very specific things that don't code properly, and if you know what those are, you can weed them out really easily. Is there an FAQ? And actually, uh, if you want to get together with me at the meetup later, what? Uh, the writer's social thing, I'll explain all of the errors that it has. Okay, because I tried doing it with one short story. Yeah, that's my through. primary medium. So. My, it's more difficult with longer stories. That yeah. It tends to overwhelm some of the, the in page. Yeah. And yeah. Google Docs, by the way, is a great way to do stories because you can get group comments and group editing going on, and it's fantastic. Yeah. 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 Right. The big thing is when you it's copy it in, you use awesome. the uploader <laughs> on the <laughs> dictionary, say upload from Google Docs, and you share the Google Doc links. Make sure that Google Doc allows at least viewing, if not editing. Um, to anyone with the link. Yes. And then 95% of the stuff will be formatted correctly. Yes. Um, uh, the other, the other thing is cutting into smaller chunks helps yes. a lot too. So a lot of times it's actually spacing issues. For some reason, yeah. like there will be like, I double space this. Well, it only looks like there's one space. And I single space this. For some reason, it looks like it's double. And I don't necessarily know what that is. Usually that has to do with how you format the Google Docs. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something to learn in. Honestly, it will be consistent throughout the document. Yeah, the other thing I was going to say that helps a lot is uh, story length. So if you've got, like you say, a huge gargantuan story, do you have it split into multiple chapters? Yeah, it's at 68 chapters. It's, uh, <laughs> but it's each chapter <laughs> a separate document? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so keep your chapters as separate documents. That'll help a ton. Okay. 
Uh, and that way, when you give people you know, permission to edit or pre-read or whatnot, they can go through just that one chapter, comment on just that one chapter, and then you can upload just that one chapter to Fan Fiction, which helps a lot, first of all. And then the second part is, uh, again, learn the, the very specific things that, that translate edit, well edit, across Fan Fiction. And yeah. it's like, something I've started doing just because, like, back when I was trying to use the Google Doc, Upload it, it was leaving large pair like large mm -hmm. chunks out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's like something I started doing is I was very limited about the f special formattings I did. It's like I have I'd center one specific thing and I could control right. it and find it, and then it's like I'd skim the chapter again, it's like find the italics, but otherwise, I'm just writing it in plain. And this is another thing that I've noticed just in my editing and pre reading is that a lot of authors that I work with, when they're writing the story, will actually in the story. Rather than use the Google Docs italics or bold or whatnot, we'll just input okay. the BB code yep. Yep. directly into the raw story in Google Docs, and they don't import. They don't use the import feature. They actually just copy and paste it. Oh, I uh, think and so it works. Right, yeah, yeah, and there's, yeah. there's guys that I, I work yeah, for that do. But, but no, they, it actually solves some of that import issue. If sometimes you're not using not like the bold button if you actually write bracket B, close bracket around. Uh, right. right, if you actually right. input the BB code, because if you pull a story from Fin Fiction and you look at it, it's gonna have BB code where a bold is uh, square bracket B, close square bracket, and right. then the word or whatever, right. and then square bracket slash B, square bracket. Um, and so if you, they, we don't even use the bold or the italics in the Google Docs. We just input the BB code directly. Find me, Pico, or uh, put them, sorry, for you, Alt tab. Jake. Alt tab. Alt tab. Jake. It's whatever. one of the fan fiction chill outs. We can toss technical stuff and shop all night and right. if we need to. Uh, there's a lot of technical stuff and that's sort of yeah. off topic from right. stuff. Uh, we had a couple of yeah, yeah, questions yeah. over here. Now you may have been you, I think. So. Are you done? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I know this question has kind of probably been asked before, but uh, there's this certain genres for use and views many times, I'm sure. Uh, do you have any tips on how to write human equestria or pony on I'm, I'm staying out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> I would be bold. I know. <laughs> Wonder Me has a great post, series of posts, just not like they're connected, he just happens to comment a couple of times. Uh, uh, he, his rule is that humans in Equestria have never been justified and you should never do it. He did say that one time he got close to where it would be justified. Now here's the thing about human in Equestria, it's your target audience. There's some people who really like human in Equestria, especially people who tend to be a little bit newer to the fandom or come from a little bit more restrictive upbringings, tend to be a little bit more uh, willing to read that type of stuff. So look at how other people do stuff and, and, and think about it. The other thing is, if you really want to write a good human in Equestria fic, why are they human? Like, it, if you, if it's, well, this person, you know, died and then was sent to Equestria, it's like, that's... Suspension of disbelief only yeah, goes so far. It, it's like, why, it's like, that, it's, it, it's like part of the, it's like, if you really want to do something that's human in Equestria in particular, crossover is usually yes. a fertile crossover. ground for that because crossover is you're going to get the fans of Doctor Who, for example, or Harry Potter, where it's like the, the fact that these worlds are crossing can be explained from both ends of its of its a magic me magic miracle high school or I would say there's <laughs> one, one but thing. even even but even the magic the magic near to the high school converted you from human to pony. Yeah, and there are restrictions. And one thing you can do now, actually, is just say, this is in that world. Not this world, that world. Because generally the fandom says, hey, this thing is separate from our thing. Yes. Um, and you know what? If there will be a lot of people who will be okay with that, to be perfectly honest. And a lot of people will comment down and they'll say, I can't believe you do this. They're like, look, you can just respond to them or you can ignore them and just, you can ignore them or respond to them and just say, look, I wanted to write a human in a crusher fic, and I know a lot of people wouldn't like it, and I'm sorry that you don't, but I, mean, I was very upfront that this is what this is, and you know, if, if you don't like it, there's a lot of other great stories on the site to read. And honestly, if you just don't overreact one way or another, either pro or against anything, a lot of people will like simmer down. They'll be like, I'm angry because of this, and the person's like, hey, that, that's fine, I get it. Okay. Uh, I, I honestly think they that don't have any place to play with their anger. There's play. what I actually sort of like a lot of those fix. I'm in the minority, I know, because they're not taken seriously. I think the reason for that, though, is like you said. First of all, you have to have a premise for it. If you're doing a crossover with Harry Potter, great. They both have magic. Somebody opened some magic spell. I mean, there's explanations for it. Mm -hmm. um, 
one of the reasons I think they get a lot of a negative rap is because so many of them tend to be focused on Mary Sue characters. They tend to be off yeah, self yeah, And that that's way. where a lot of the negative connotation comes. Mm -hmm. If you have a reason why there's, it's a fantasy world with talking horses, of course anything can happen, why not? There's no reason that that shouldn't be there, but when it's just an excuse to, oh, hey, I get to go in there and meet all the Oh, I mean, this guy named Arthur uh, is not mine, you know, whatever it is. If you don't make it a Mary Sue, if you make something interesting happen with it, and that's the key to any story. You can take the most ridiculous premise in the world, and if you actually do good with it, it doesn't matter how ridiculous the premise was. So make it a unique story, make it your own, find them, don't be as Mary Sue about it, and just know that some people are going to hate it anyway because they just don't like that genre, the same way some people hate certain ships. Yeah, uh, quick, quick side note on that one too is uh, the tagging feature on fin fiction is yes. great, so use it, uh, it helps get to that target audience thing. So yeah. uh, if it's a human story, tag a human, because yes. people like me or, or other people that don't particularly care for human, I'm very unlikely to read anything that's got a human tag in it. Mm -hmm. uh, just as a but some, people are, but some people are looking for that, and so it's great. Still uh, and so it can help weed tag. people out ahead of time. Science so fiction, human HIE stories are my favorite. Right. So, yeah. so uh, a couple other questions uh, over let's here. Let's go with uh, this one right here. He's been waiting a while. Yeah. Yes, Kevin. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, in regards to human and aquaria, are there any particular ones that you would recommend that are like really unique on all Mary Sue and whatnot? <laughs> uh, I, I never read them. I really like Stargate Equestria, which is really old and never got finished, so know that going into yeah. it. I like I love Stargate yeah. and because there was existing characters and there, they they already had a magic portal device in the sci-fi show, so you know. <laughs> to me it was to me it was an interesting yeah, fun rock. It's not highbrow fiction I would say, but it was a fun rock and I think it was true to the characters in both universes. So uh, and, romance you also see a lot of Mary Sue-ish type situations where one character is perfect and oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I've seen that. will be a panel on that later on romance. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of questions, so let's just try and get to a little bit more. Yeah, he's been waiting for a long time. Richard, Richard, Richard. 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 There, in the writing process, like, I would usually, I come up with, like, the big events, like, oh, that's a good idea, oh, then that happened, oh, then that happened, but then, like, the, how to connect, like, from plot point to plot point, the, the, the filling of the set, which, like, it, I have a difficult time making it all flow, like, there, where it makes th sense. There's a lot of different and techniques and for that. So, yeah. and, yeah. Sure. and that's a kind of vague question. And from the like, community perspective, more. that's when, if you have trouble with that, that's when you get pre to help with that. Yeah. You say, well, look, I got these ideas, here's my outline, here's the big chunk, how can we connect these? Help me brainstorm. <laughs> In that situation, I, there, there's two ways to look at it. There's event-driven writing, which is the big events, and then there's character-driven writing, where the characters will take you on the adventure as you like. Yes. Um, when you have big events, you can, you can have your big events, um, have them played out, but start writing it in order oftentimes and start seeing where your characters take you with a goal in mind but you might find it shifts to the left to the right up down you might replace them you might take something out and put in something different especially if you have a lot of ideas that'll end up actually flowing a lot better and then and, you'll, and, and on the flip side of that coin you'll end up with stuff that just gets put in your story for no reason whatsoever other than it's pointless one-liner joke thing <laughs> that now ends up being part of the story. Like, what was the, the thing about uh, Princess Celestia has the Griffin love child thing? That oh, no. That was a tabloid headline. Like, like seven real headlines in one tabloid. In one tabloid headline. Like, and and all, all of us have read it and we're like, that has to happen now. One bad joke and like, you have to actually do that now. Okay, let's just go straight around the room. Okay, so this one is is grammatically focused. Um, when, when I write, I have this terrible, terrible habit, and so do a lot of people that I've read, of using commas to create essentially meter. Okay. And I know that's wrong. Uh, it is and it isn't. But um, what is, like, I, I, and again, this is one of the most nebulous words of But but if you're like looking for me or like for Zakora or something, maybe. But yeah. It's like 
sometimes it's about looking at the word, looking at the words and building it, building the sentence and figuring out where the stress is. Right. And again, this goes back to my comment earlier of read it. If you're if you're ever unsure, the first thing that you should do is read it out loud. Mm -hmm. So go back. If you have to go back a, a whole paragraph or two and just read that whole passage all the way through out loud, especially in dialogue, um, because you'll catch it more in dialogue than you will in anything else. It helps set meter because a pause indicates it's supposed to indicate a comma, or a, a comma, comma is supposed to indicate a pause, right? right. Uh, and so there's that aspect of it where it's like, yeah, okay, I need to pause here. Um, and then there's other parts where it sets off a dependent part of the sentence. Uh, and this goes again. This is we're going so, into way so technical using stuff. Using it as a pause is not. It can, it's it's okay. It can be okay. Oh, oh, I would say the okay. best way to do it is oftentimes to before or after or once in the middle of a speaking paragraph, but only once, um, interrupt the speech to have an action. So, you know, pack those side as you put an arm and pinch your shoulder and said, keep doing it. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's one thing if you need to try to break up the cadence of the dialogue is to insert a bit of the action. Yeah, and, the and that makes the comma seem more appropriate because it's bringing back up the emotions and the actions and the feelings of whoever's talking. Okay. Do, 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 do you. <laughs> um, yeah, back to the yeah, human crossover subject. Um, that's uh, pretty much the type of stories that I write. Uh, I do have uh, one other story that that's basically a uh, sequel to another person's story. But uh, anyway, the story that I, I first started writing when I got into the uh, website, um, at first I wasn't really good at uh, writing that well, but I did have good ideas. And people uh, people told me that hey, you know, this has this has promise in it. But you have some uh, uh, grammatical errors here, some uh, punctuation errors there, and you know the the story that I'm talking about that had like 32 likes, 31 dislikes. All right, I've been improving upon it for every comment that they give me that you know improves upon my work. But the problem is, I I still got plenty of people that hate it, and yet my story is like all that action. I read this one story that's by this guy uh, who has like. 15,000 views on the one story and has like 8,000 likes and it's about a guy who goes to, the, uh, to their world and ends up marrying like four different ponies. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. uh, somehow, that somehow is, is, is that one by Brody Rider? No, it's uh, called A Hoof in Two Worlds. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, here's yeah, the thing. It's target audience. If if you are in high school and you write a high school level story and high school level people read it, they will like it and they will upload it. If you write a college level story for high school level people, they will like it a little bit less. If you write a high school level story for a college level readership, they will really dislike it. <laughs> yes. And if you write a philosophical dissertation for people that just want to ship fig, you're probably going to get a lot yeah. of emotion. Some people will like it. Like I, I really like some of the stuff. One of the, my favorite stories is Pinky washes, Pinky Pie Washes Paint Dry. It's, yeah. it's yeah. like, <laughs> what, 3,000 words about her staring at a bowl and Rainbow Dash is like, right. yeah, the cakes told me about this. Here's the cupcake. Oh, she feels better now. And then she still had this like huge psychological like analysis of like, well, I'm painting the pink or the orange pink. Am I betraying the orange? And, am I not its friend? And, <laughs> you know what? If you're the right audience and you... That's one of the things about being offered staying consistent or informing your audience what you're doing. If you're doing something different, inform them. But Can I, yeah. I was just going to say, sometimes, I mean, if you keep rewriting, rewriting, rewriting the same story and it's not leading to results, Grab writing it. is hard. At some point, you have to write more. Write new stuff. Just keep yeah. writing. If you keep writing, you will get better. It is guaranteed that if you keep writing, you will get better no matter what. It's like and at some it's point, maybe you let it go for a year and then come back and rewrite that story after you've had practice on 20 other stories since then. It, that's like an idea. It's like the metaphor that artists like to use. You gotta get a thousand bad yeah. drawings. You gotta get a million words out before you're a good author. Yeah. yeah. That's basically if, it. The other thing is, if your downvote probably won't go away. If people probably won't go back and upvote it. The only way to really do that is if you see a comment where someone's unhappy with their fic and you thank them for your feedback and you incorporate it, sometimes you will get people going back and changing that thumbs down to a thumbs up. That's about all you can do. Yeah, and I think the other part of that too is when you get those those comments that say, I didn't like your story, and that's all they say, take a little bit of a risk and, and PM them and go, or, or reply to them in the comments, either one, and just go, why? 
I need specifics. I'm trying to improve. I, I'm, I'm glad that you read the story, and I understand that you didn't like it, but help me improve. Tell me why you didn't like it, because I can't fix it until you tell me. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there's that aspect of it, too. Would you, uh, um, go you ahead. Guys, uh, you guys, like, do, uh, like, uh, after, uh, after hours, like, uh, just read stories and then, uh, like, help people? That's what, the or, that's what the orcs for. Yeah, the, that's what the orcs for. The orcs are going to be running I can't get that. Yeah. Oh, there's, okay. three, there's one each day. Yeah, yeah. And Fan Fiction Chill Out is going at the same time as Pony Stop. So you might have to miss out on a little bit on Pony Stop, but come say hi. Meet writers, meet people. Yeah. I mean, some, meet no, some of the writers are going to be gone tonight because we, we will have many stories to judge. There is the art on the You know, come, come talk to one of us afterwards. We'll find something for you to help you. Um, we're going around the room. We do have one back there. Thanks. Um, this this uh, panel is about community and you. We've learned a lot of ways to get help from the community and also give back to the yeah. community. Mm -hmm. Isn't that helpful? Um, my question is about credit. There's a whole lot of ways to help from like a quick comment or DM all the way up to like co-writing, right? And there's a lot of ways to credit someone from thanking them for comments to putting their name in the description or afterwards, mm -hmm. all the way to, you know, that you is on the cover of that past set of book. Um, so I'm kind of looking just for some rules of thumb. What's the right way to correct someone to not be a jerk? Like, what's the right threshold? Like, I, it's like, from, it all depends on your personal styles. Like, for me, when I have pre readers, I credit them under the byline for every chapter. But it's what you get used to, the style of crediting that you get used to, and also kind of be open to discussing. I'm like, hey, I want to credit you. What, like, if you've got been credited before, how have the authors done it? Or what do you like? Do you like or do you want to be anonymous or something? I actually have a few rules with them. If someone's with you, the entire thing or plans on being, do it in the story description. And quite often at the end of the story, uh, doing it at the end of each chapter is okay, but you don't have to. Um, if they're helping out the specific chapter, do it at the bottom. Um, at the end of the story, credit everyone. If someone comes on partway through a story and then helps you with the previous things, comment at the beginning of your story again, again in the story description, and then uh, at your next chapter, let people know, hey, this person came and helped me out with stuff. If some, if some stuff has been bothering you and you want to read it, you know, this person helped me. Um, and those are pretty good guidelines, I believe. Yeah, the biggest one that I've always seen is just a lot of people will discredit us in in the story description, it'll you know they'll have the blurb about the description, and there's just this little line at the bottom that says you know previewed and editing by, and there's a list of names, and usually link to their user pages. Yeah, yeah. I mean yes. make, make the names links because then people can you know if they write stories themselves, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and just be nice. I mean you can't go you can't really go overboard. I mean there's an author notes section if you right. want to be really flowery and think, thank you so much for major help from blah 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 and so and so and give personal thanks and stuff. You can yeah. do that too. But that's that's the other way I've seen it done is author's notes at the end of the chapter. Either the end or the beginning of the chapters. It's usually the end though. So we are going around. I believe you, sir, are next. Yeah. How do you motivate yourself to write? <laughs> <laughs> you get feedback from the community. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's different per person. Um, making the big time, no. What would be making the big time? Kind of is good for that because, um, but it's. I guess it all depends on what you. It's like go to one of the other panels where it's like focused on what you're trying to write and where you're struggling to find motivation. <coughs> literary merit might also be. Yeah, actually, yeah, literary merit might be a good place for that. Um, but we'll, we'll actually. I, I think have we'll fun at it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun. If you're having fun at it. Motivation is not too hard to find. Time is harder to find than motivation. Yeah. Yes, you know. Know. Um, Speaking of time, we do have four questions. So how about you come talk to me afterwards, and I'll try and get you. To, uh, get you can I it. can I answer one quick thing on that? Okay. okay. Um, the other thing is to yes, have fun with it, but at the same time realize that writing, especially if you want to do this because you want to do this as a thing, uh, it's a job, and sometimes jobs aren't fun, but you still got to do them. Yeah. So it's not finding the motivation. It's I have to. I have to sit down and I have to write a thousand words before I'm allowed to have a bowl of cereal in the morning or something. I don't know. Find something that works for you. Once, once, if you like it, once you get started, it's easier to continue. Right. Have a schedule. Something that can help is sometimes when you're writing one long fic, mm -hmm. write something else because sometimes you yes. just need a break. Yes. Yeah, it's right. great. So sometimes you just get sick to death of this. 
So we had a couple other questions yeah, up here. Yeah. Not, not to interrupt, but we, we do have a limited amount of time. So you guys touched on it earlier um, about their people's uh, display pictures online, especially in the forums, uh, developing a presence, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, you also referenced the comic book art, but you didn't really go into touching on getting artwork for your pieces. So uh, that's definitely a community that resource. Is, um, artwork is interesting because the most common way you see it is either you follow a link from someone's art that you saw somewhere or that they posted somewhere saying that I'm doing art or you posted somewhere, hey, I'm looking for art. If you don't know them personally, a lot of times they'll end up in a commission and that's just how it is. If you know people who draw or you or you want to find someone, post the blog post, ask your friends. Even if they're not into ponies, you know, they might be willing to help you out, you know, if they're real life friends and stuff like that. That's the simplest way to look for people. Um, when it comes down to it, you can try to get recommendations from authors um, who've done stuff. Yeah, and the other the other flip side of that point is commissions. Obviously, you've got permission to use because you you pay an artist to do them. Yeah. Uh, and DeviantArt is a great place to do that. It's nice to be able to support other other people in, in the DeviantArt community and just say, hey, can you do? It? And some of them will do commissions. Some of them won't. So you kind of have to hunt around, uh, find someone's artwork that you like, and just say, hey, I'm interested in getting a, a commission for this. I, I can pay you a few bucks or something, and some of them got set prices, some of them don't. Again, and just haggle with them. The other, the flip side of that coin too is a lot of artists out there don't mind if you use their artwork, especially yep. on DeviantArt. But anytime you use their stuff, credit them. So if you, if you use an image off DeviantArt, make sure it's in the story description that says cover art by and link and their page on DeviantArt. It's like fan fiction that has a built-in source yes. feature. Also, yeah. ask for permission first because sometimes people yes. will have done stuff as commission for someone else. You're like, you know, this is a commission for a different story. You know, maybe they made a description or they put a description of the art and you just didn't see it or something or maybe they didn't. And they will say, you know, uh, go get permission from this person, or it's actually, it's a recolor, because I've seen this too, where it's that someone did a recolor and a different background for a thing, and they're like, it's this part's mine, this other part's someone else, I'm okay with using my part, go ask them. Yes. Um, so definitely, and make sure to credit them in the story description. And, and that's a big thing in just the community in general, credit where credit is due, yeah. so. And if I may just put one more comment on that, uh, for one of the stories I'm writing, I commissioned a recolor art from an, from an artist on DeviantArt, and I was going to pay him, but he liked my story enough that he did it for free, and then we did a signal boost both ways. Right, yeah. So yeah. it can be a very good way to improve your and uh, I, have a, I have a shameless plug. Uh, Jake and I here are actually <laughs> working on uh, other resources, more tangible physical goods, so we actually have free samples for everyone as you leave. So oh, oh, come get swag. Great. So people can come there. Okay. Yeah, I'll catch you by the door. Yeah, we yeah. got a few. And you got a couple more. A few minutes. I okay. believe the next in line is super. Uh, oh, right there. And then. Okay. I had a response to someone's question. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can go ahead. Uh, what does. So I've seen a lot of disclaimers on, you know, various stories. I'm just wondering what the general consensus is on that. You know, the disclaimer, like, My Little Pony is not. Uh, it's all about your personal well, preference. And yes. that, that came None of us are lawyers up here. Uh, are, are you talking about legal disclaimers about yeah. how it's copy of yeah. copyright? Actually, I have an answer for this. Um, it initially came out of before there was really thin fiction and even before EQD, people were doing fan works. They did it. They had to include it in their story um, because now when you have thin fiction and EQD, it's more understood that everyone who posts there basically um, is crediting Hasbro because it's a site dedicated to a show made by. Hasbro and the production team on the show. Right. So you don't have to anymore. However, if you are doing it on a on a site that's not dedicated to My Little Pony specifically, like on fanfiction.net, credit. Them. Yeah. And and say that you know this is a work of fiction. And, you know I didn't. You know some of the a lot of the characters aren't my own. That's and there's no harm in doing it if you want to be. That's safe. true. Yeah. 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 When, when in doubt, cover your flag. Yeah, it's, 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 like it's like I copy paste the same four lines from the bottom of old chapters into new ones. And just it, it can also help as a, as a lead in people click on a story before they start, you know, actually reading your story. They're reading a few words, and so then the intro, their their brain's a little bit more in tune with reading, so that can actually be a little help there. Yes. Um, I had something to say on like writing magic, like. Is there a general consens consensus to how it's supposed to be written? Because you don't want to be Mary Sue, so you don't want to have a semantic to do anything. But if, if it's not directly from the show, explain it and make it consistent. 
That's yeah. the two easiest yeah. rules. If, if you are going more in depth than the show, you have to explain it. And you know what? In some cases, that means you have to write an extra chapter. I think you... No, that wasn't you. Um, well, um, it's like the first part, chapter of Past Sins, I was introducing like... A the more, ritual magic. The ritual magic, which is like... <laughs> It was an old, like, it's an abandoned form of art because it's all complicated. You have to do all the equations to figure out the symbols where unicorns can just cast the spell, to do, cast the cast the new levitation spell and do it in a slash. Yeah. Or, and, like, getting extra magical aura energy or whatever you want to call it from zebra powders because, like, how else is the core doing nightmare moon junk? Right. But, um... Yeah, it's... And, and I, I think, think a couple of good examples on that, that uh, type of thing... Uh, a good one that's funny related would be uh, a heart of change. And, and uh, Moonstone. Uh, Moonstone. Oh, okay, yeah. And, and but then one that's not funny related that maybe more people can understand is um, if anyone's ever read the the Aragon series, uh, the, the Dragon books. Um, they uh, he he actually sets up a system of magic in that and says these are the rules. So there are definite rules, and doing anything that you couldn't do by some sort of physical means will kill you. There is no way around it. It will cost you your life if you screw this up. So, and whatever you do, it takes the same amount of energy. It just doesn't take the same amount of necessarily physical work. You so. have to understand how it works because you're basically doing that. It's not just like, oh, these two things magically separate. It's like, no, it's the equivalent of you picking out each grain of sand oh, from each oh, grain oh, of oh, I mean, <laughs> Um We had a comment with Super Fair in the back. Oh, if anyone wants to come out, we have a few good human and question recommendations. Not any okay. And it is the uh, 231, so um, if anyone else has any, you know, feel free to talk amongst yourselves. Um, if, we, if we stay up here, come talk.